And so these guys have figured out a way to create a computer algorithm that actually creates structures. I was very impressed by the amount of savings, specifically fuel savings they would project. It's so cool. But when you put it on the airplane, you cover it up with some goofy carpet. Just think how much weight they would save if they didn't put the carpet on it. This district is historically known as a financial powerhouse in New York and America, but it's evolving. Designers and tech innovators are moving into these buildings. And there's one guy in particular whose design can change a whole industry. David? Hey, Suma. Do Hey, David. How's it going? Come on Good. in. Good timing, actually. Uh, this just arrived from Germany, and I want to show you what's inside. It's a Thanks. plane. Yeah, so, Very cool. so this is a project that we've been working on with Airbus, and the idea is to make an entirely new kind of airplane for you know some of the demands of the future. Mm -hmm. It's designed with the logic of a bird skeleton, actually. Okay. In nature, bones form according to organic forces and pressures. It gets strong where it needs to be strong, and therefore you could potentially use less material to make an airplane that's just as strong. Uh, we've started already with designing airplane components one by one that could lead up to something like this kind of plane. Very cool. So what's the first component that you're starting with? The first component is called a partition. So, Suma, can you uh, hit the space bar right here? Oh my goodness. Well, this is a different living organism. It's called slime mold. Slime mold. And slime mold sends out this pretty um, dense network of lines. And slowly, over time, it reinforces the lines that are important and removes the lines that are not important. So what does this have to do with the plane we just saw? So here's an algorithm that's modeling the logic of slime mold. And then we use generative design to generate, evaluate, and evolve literally thousands of different design options. And actually, this is the one that we selected for this project. So David, real talk here. Are we actually going to see these in planes? This one is being certified to fly in today's airplanes. And if this is rolled out to all the A320 planes flying today, this will save 1 million tons of carbon emissions per year. Hi, Bastian. What do you do at Airbus? I'm innovation manager. I'm working for one of the coolest teams at Airbus called Technology Exploration in a lab uh, in Hamburg with a lot of 3D printers. So David was talking about the bionic partition, and this is all he had to really show me. Um, what else do you got for us? Well, I have the partition in full scale with me. We had to print 116 parts to accomplish this work. These structures are so efficient that we have a weight reduction of 50% compared to the state-of-the-art partition. I looked up what 1 million tons of carbon emissions is. It means it's saving the equivalent of 240,000 cars, or 2% of New York City's total emissions per year, just by installing this one tiny piece of the aircraft. Just imagine what we could do if we got to this stage. We're in Dumbo, where the story, at a certain point, evolved at a rapid pace. But actually, the story started earlier in South Carolina with John, and we have John here today. So our company before COVID was a, you know, a design for manufacturing technology company. In February and March, just like everyone, we were getting shut down. Our workforce went home, we're working remote. Uh, so really scary. In March, we started receiving some urgent calls from hospitals. Can you 3D print face shields or ventilator components and, you know, really anything? We could 3D print about a thousand units uh, a day, but we had orders immediately for a hundred thousand. And so we went to injection molding. We ended up producing three million protective face shields for hospitals and government agencies all across the country. But in April, we were seeing already requests from businesses who were trying to reopen. I needed something that could be worn in a restaurant or a hotel, but didn't look like something that would be worn in a hospital. At that time, I called Scott Henderson, right? He has a really fantastic design aesthetic and makes really beautiful products. Hey, Mauro. 
The human head is filled with all kinds of geometric complexities because everybody's head is different. So we thought, what happens if we take the head out of the equation altogether? <laughs> that, that's a scary image. What do you mean with removing the head out of the equation? So this is for a musician. It holds a harmonica here, you see? So it just goes on like this, and now it's a neck-mounted thing. So what happens if we put a shield up here, right? All right, well, here it is. This is the Z-Shield Flex. So you wear it like this? Yeah, it just goes on nice and easy like that. It feels so comfortable, you just don't it's feel very it. light, yeah, and you almost don't even see it. It almost looks invisible. And then, you, and then can. you can adjust it. If you need to take a sip of coffee, answer the phone, you just flip it down for a minute. Super convenient. So that's all fantastic in a design studio. But now I am at the great dog uh, in the West Village. Let's test drive this in real life. So Claire, can you try this for us? Absolutely. Oh. What do you think? I like how easily it goes on. It's very light and very comfortable. It almost feels like you're wearing a necklace. And you have space also on the side, yeah, right? Yeah, so if you had to take a call, you can fit the receiver there. So that's a great advantage to it. And yeah. then you can take it down. Oh, oh that's wonderful. Oh, this would be really lovely just if you're grabbing a quick bite as you go or to take a quick drink of water. Yeah, I, I think this is really wonderful. You can keep it. Really? Thank you! Ooh. So, history teaches us that innovation often comes out of crisis. You can react to a crisis negatively, or like John, turning adversity into opportunity and building value for yourself, for the people surrounding you, and for society.